Hello, anyone and everyone, I am Echo, and today we're exploring the vanishing of Ethan Carter. We are down here in the mines where there is the big ol' creepy looking Cthulhu gate down in the middle of these mines, with which are a maze filled with a uh, creepy uh, zombie dude carrying his lamp all around. Um. I do believe that I figured out the uh, method for finding the correct uh, code for the gate, but it's going to require some work. So I'm going to have me a look-see around the rest of this mine, this maze-like mine. And I wonder if... Uh, if the zombie guy is even going to keep appearing. Since we did examine his corpse. And made the ghost of it appear over the... Uh... Over one of the symbols. Hey! There's another version of the zombie guy. I'll bet that's going to go stand on another symbol. Okay, so never mind. There's probably... These were probably nondescript miners that uh, were working in the mine. The one that uh, was able to attack us and was holding his lamp, he's probably like a restless spirit or whatever that was all like, no, I don't want to die. And, uh, the rest, as we can see from these dead bodies, apparently just sort of sat down and accepted it, I guess. Okay, so that's what basically what we're doing. We gotta go find all the dead bodies. Six of them in total. We've already found three. We only actually need to find five. Um... If we find five, then we can basically just... Oh, hey, he's back. There's the restless one I was mentioning. But yeah, if we find five, then we can just go back and sort of brute force the answer for the last one. Wouldn't even really be brute forcing, it'd be basic logic, logical deduction. Yes, yeah, so that's four. Where are we? Up here? Alright, this is the place where we saw him coming through. And there is another dead body down here. Five. Awesome, we got the fifth. Alright. Now, assuming that Mr. Grumpy Lamp doesn't come try and ruin our fun. We can just, uh, waltz back here and and guess the code. And I don't even know if I'm supposed to be doing this right now. For all I know, I could accidentally uncover the final cutscene of the game or something. <laughs> but we've got five and that's all we need. The pentagram is on the wonky onk. It's now the diamond. It needs to go to the horseshoe. Alright, which one's diamond? This one, right here. Alright. There you go. Onto the horseshoe looking thing. The square needs to be on the Z. Square down here on Z. Alright. The triangle needs to go to the uh, curve thing. Sort of looks like a moon. Let's see. Triangle's the top one. Not that, nope, not that, not that, not that, that one. And then the circle goes to Z. Wait a minute, other way. Right there. Okay, so I think upside down triangle is the only one that we don't have, right? Yes, alright. So this one we should just be able to 
rotate it, let it rest for a minute on each one, and we should be able to figure out the combination. Maybe this is even the way we're intended to do it because I don't think I looked at every single nook and cranny of the entire, uh, yeah, I, I didn't look at like every single nook and cranny of the entire mine, but it seems like, oh, it's filling up with water and there's tentacles. This is literally Cthulhu. Am I supposed to leave? I can't leave, I'm dead. Oh, uh, you have no idea how terrified I am right now. Being underwater is uh, one of the worst things ever for me, personally. <laughs> the curse of the sea thing. Oh, please just tell me this is just an optional story. I really don't want to have accidentally skipped the entire game. I mean, that's actually, thinking about it, that was actually a very easy puzzle to figure out. Uh, so if this is something we were intended to come back to after having completed Ethan's storyline, then that was very poorly done on the developer's part because they should have locked it off better or something. Um, so I'm really hoping this is just a optional story, uh, like optional puzzle tied to one of Ethan's stories. So the Curse of the Sea thing. The, uh, Ethan, oh shit, I, I told you to stay out. God damn it. Look, it's dangerous in here. I'll read your story later. Okay? And, um, please don't tell your mother I'm in here. Alright? Okay. Now, you go. Get back home. I forgot to fucking read it again. I really hope the... That's what they did last time, right? Okay, saving scene. Let me actually read it this time, please. I can't... I swear to God. Like... Can't you just make it so, like, space or something is to put it back and, like, both of the mouse's m mouse buttons are to, uh, zoom in? That would make so much more sense. The Enochian Necronomicon, the Iron Ore Miners, had finally found it, but not all of them wanted to perform its ritual and summon the sea thing, Ganaya. One miner realized the ritual would unleash Ganaya's flood upon this world, and so the miner had no choice but to stab the others with shards of magic elk down. Ganaya, in response, cursed the miner, who now wanders the mine, doomed to prevent others from summoning the sea thing and flooding the world forever. Okay, so that was Ganaya. The big tentacle thing. Oh my god. That was seriously so nerve wracking, though. Just watching the tentacles float around and we're stuck underwater. Because that is seriously one of my biggest fears, is, like, being stuck deep underwater. I'm not a very good swimmer. Um, the idea of, like, a shark or a squid or just anything really big being underwater. Because all of those sea creatures are so naturally adept at swimming that they can swim around incredibly fast and just go in any direction effortlessly. The idea of being trapped underwater with something that wants to eat you is like the most terrifying thing in the world for me because of that it's like right up there amongst all my top things I'm afraid of and so that was nerve wracking having to watch that but okay we got a lot to read here so United States Patent and Trademark Office Re request for clarification. Dear Mr. Carter, the United States Patent and Trademark Office has received your January 27th, 1973 letter requesting further explanation as to why your recently submitted patent uh, 527F2D was rejected by this office. As we explained in our previous letter, the patent was rejected for infringing upon a previously existing patent. We have on record from you more than four dozen requested patents submitted in the last 16 months. No, uh, none has been successful and all have been met with challenges by you. Mr. Carter, we would like to consider this matter and future matters administratively closed. Sincerely, James Mackey, Administrative Director. Patent for what? I'm assuming that's... I'm assuming that's Dale? 
that was trying to send in pat uh, patents. Dale, get your shit out of our basement. Bring it to the goddamn dump. I am so sick of stepping over your lifetime of failure on my way to the washing machine. I'm not kidding. Either you move it or I burn it. M. M. Okay, don't know who M is. Uh, don't believe that's a name. Missy. Oh, yeah, it could be Missy. Um, so, alright, it seems... Maybe I was wrong about him being a teacher. Maybe he's he's sort of a novice inventor. Uh, it seems... Dale would invent things, send them to the patent office, and I guess, uh... This is just sort of a, you could call it an educated guess. Um, it seems like he was probably taking inspiration from things that already existed and trying to make his own version of them. Because if he put in six, oh, I'm sorry, not 16, that's 16 months, four dozen requested patents. Four dozen. That's 48 different things within a span of 16 months. 48 different inventions that man had in that short period of time that he tried to get a patent on to make a product of to sell. I don't think there's a person on the world that is creative enough to think of 48 different entirely unique inventions worthy of becoming a best-selling product within 16 months. Maybe somebody could come up with 48 entirely unique, never-before-heard-of inventions throughout their entire lifespan, but not in 16 months. That's less than two years. And so for him to do that, I have to think he was probably... He, he was probably trying to find a way to do his own version of a pre-existing product, change something about it, and then say, look, this is mine. It's completely original. What? It's not like that other thing. That other thing doesn't do this. Look what I added. And then get a patent for it and, you know, produce it as a product and sell it and try to make money, which is, you know, fine. He has a family to take care of. That's admirable. Do what you have to. Um, but obviously, the U.S. Patent Office wasn't freaking having it. And, uh, it seems all of his patents, all of his ideas, his inventions, which were totally original, do not steal, um, it seems he kept them, and he stuffed them in boxes and saved them, and his wife really didn't like it, so eventually he took them out of the basement, and he stuffed them down here and locked them up, just sort of dumped them in the mine, and lock them up, and, uh, um, all the other stories Ethan wrote seem to be sort of tied to real-life events, um, the, the Fangs one, he wrote Fangs about the, the monster that wanted to escape or whatever, and fall the light, that one could easily have been his, uh, just his own stress, you know, as a kid growing up in a, uh, very rural area, uh, not, not even rural, what am I saying, country, you know, a very, very out of the way area, and sort of feeling like he can't escape, you know, so feeling tied to his family and everything like that, um, but also the dialogue Travis made, uh, after that moment, show that Travis also felt the same way. You know, they both wanted to sort of get out of there. They both felt tied to their family and tied to their, you know, rustic way of living out in the country. And they both felt like they wanted something more. And he wrote the Fang story about, uh, uh, you know, about basically the monster seeing this bright light. And the bright light could have easily been sort of a representation of, you know, the city life or just more modern life in general. And, uh, you know, the monster was, like, trying to follow it and trying to escape and get out. Um, the story about 
the the old man with the house that burns down and everything that was directly based off of events that happened to his grandfather ed um the story about uh the witch was based off of his own stress with his bad relationship with his mother um who he felt was sort of uh you know not appreciative of him and all that um and this one i guess i guess this is based off of his dad with the uh, the enochian necronomicon perhaps being meant to represent all of the uh the the you know inventions that his his father was trying to make you know the Eno enochian necronomicon would be a collection of you know you know magic spells or whatever and things like that his dad's pile of old patents would be a collection of ideas and inventions and everything and the majority of the miners uh didn't want uh, the, the the one miner didn't want anything to do with the the evil gnaia while all the others were trying to summon him and i guess that's sort of a reverse of the situation his dad was in where his dad was trying to get everybody to uh you know believe in his inventions but the u.s patent office wasn't freaking doing it and uh i mean again i can't really blame the u.s patent office either for not wanting to to deal with his crap but oh well all right so now that we've got that down i'm i'm very glad i did that now i was i was seriously nervous because of the whole thing with the sleeper and everything i was seriously nervous that i had accidentally skipped to the end of the game and maybe we were supposed to come back and do that later but thank god it turned out just to be an optional uh side puzzle area with a bit of story about his father so that was great so just go along to the place with the boiling water follow along ethan's path shall we get a drink of soda here <sighs> throat gets dry after talking so much making them beautiful words <laughs> if you can call them that all right and unfortunately his mom's dead body is so rudely blocking the elevator so we can't use that anymore so i guess we'll have to take the long way around through the smelly water that can't be seriously all this gas coming out cannot be healthy it doesn't have to necessarily be like instantly toxic like oh no breathe it in you're gonna die get cancer or whatever but there's no way it could be good for us or for ethan especially him he's a kid kids have smaller lungs and everything and just in general weaker bodies they can't handle stuff like that as well i could feel two kinds of darkness here in red creek valley the first you walked into and with any luck walked out of but the other darkness was deeper stickier uh, unknowable and it wanted me to leave mm-hmm I'm guessing all of the uh, pent-up emotions and stress of the family is the first kind that he's talking about. The one that you walk into and can walk out of. And perhaps the sleeper and its malevolent force is the uh, other kind. The stickier, unknowable one that wants him to get the hell out. That'd be my guess. And here we are. I knew it. We're at the bottom of the bridge. There's uh, Vandegrift Estate up there. There's the house, and there's the quarry over there. And here's another house that I didn't see earlier. That's the the main one I saw. That's the freaking Bergenworth looking place over there. This uh, this is weird. This is... I've never seen the house built on a river like this. That's interesting. Jeez, I better hope you don't get a leak in the basement. That shit's never gonna stop. Right, anything over here? Just a random mausoleum. Built in 1901. Okay, that's cool. And 
And... Is that the... Where the hell did the entrance to the mine go? <laughs> I just... I sort of lost it. We're super close to the house. Where's the... Seriously, where's the entrance to the mine? We didn't come out this close to the house, did we? Um... Is it over here? The hell? Did the... Did the entrance to the mine somehow get replaced with the... No, it's under here. Okay. Oh, jeez. I was so freaking confused. And that's not a mausoleum. That's probably, uh... That's probably something to commemorate the building of the mine. I guess. I guess they probably would have done something like that. Okay, but that... Okay. Wow. I was super confused. I didn't realize that was above it. Okay. Let's head over here first. I don't even know if we can go in this house. But if we can. Oh, it's not a house. It's a... Mm, well, it's locked. It's not a house. It's just a place for... Uh, whatchamacallit. It's like a... The dam. Obviously. Like, the, the dam... Is there to, the, to block the water coming through? And I guess this is a uh, some type of workplace to uh, keep an eye on the dam or something. I'm not sure what it's called. But the door is locked, so I guess we can't go in there yet. I don't suppose they left a key under the mat. No, 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 no. Okay. All right. Off to Bergenworth, then, by the looks of it. Seriously, I, th I thought... Oh, hey, we can walk out here. Take a take a dip. Some very clean-looking water. Nice. But yeah, seriously, from up on the, uh, the, the, the bridge, I thought this place looked so much like Bergenworth from Bloodborne. It's kind of crazy. Especially from above, the roof is a similar shape. Um, I, re I managed to restrain myself for a whole, like, seven episodes before <laughs> before just calling it Bergenworth, because what the hell, why not? Alright, let's not go inside just yet. Just want to peek around the outside, see if there's anything out here. Anything out here worth staring at. Oh, there's the, there's the elevator from before. I don't suppose we can use it now, can we? Inspect the scissors. Oh! The hell? Somebody tried to repair the broken railing with some cord? Alright, let's go up, though. I suppose this is just a, a shortcut if anybody wants to go back and do earlier puzzles. Stop. We can stop it? In the middle of the thing? What is that, to jump off there? We'll try doing that on the way back down. How about that? Ooh. A little bit of loading. Whoopsie dupsie. Yeah, okay. Saving scene for whatever reason. Hmm. Yeah, so this just takes us back here. We already did the puzzles up here. So I guess this is just a shortcut for convenience. For Well, actually, let's actually walk out here and look around just in case anything's changed. I highly doubt it, but you never know. But yeah, I guess if anybody managed to progress past this point without doing some of the puzzles, like maybe they skipped the trap one at the beginning like I did, but didn't go back for it as early as I did, or maybe if they skipped the, the witch one in the forest, I imagine that would be another easy one to miss. This is a good uh, shortcut to take them back, I suppose. Now, we can't jump over the railing. 
can't climb up on top of this or anything like that. And I can't imagine any reason why we'd want to stop it. My only clue, my only guess, would be to get out right here. But we can't. We can't jump out. And the door doesn't even flip open. Oh, so it's just if you want to change direction, if you change your mind, you start going up and you realize, oh no, I didn't want to go up. So you stop it and then you go back down. Okay. All right. That's a nice feature, I guess. Not exactly a, a deal breaker. Also, that's a nifty little trick for manually saving the game, I suppose. It seems to save every time you go through the... Every time we go through the uh, elevator. It might not continue to do that in the future, but for now it seems to, so if, uh... If anybody playing this game is like, Oh no, the autosaving's ruining me. Well, there you go. Just get far enough to unlock the elevator. <laughs> Alright, anything else around here? You have to scour these forests. For anything of note. Ooh. Little nook up there. Be a neat place to go camping, maybe. Anything down here? No. Just more crystal clear water. And what about the store? High voltage! Danger! Danger! High voltage! No, okay, I'm not gonna do that. Not gonna get into singing. No thanks, I'm not. Mm -mm. But I can't see high voltage a sign like that without thinking of the, the song, so. Had to say it. Just once. Just once. Never do it again. Promise in the entire rest of the uh, days of this channel, I will never, ever sing again. How about that? Is that a promise I can keep? Probably not. Anybody care? Probably not. <gasps> hey, Dad! What's up, Dad? Lots of stuff we can inspect. Let's go back down here and inspect this one first. But let's do that at the start of the next episode, because I'm close to out of time, and this is a good place to stop right here anyways, so might as well. We'll continue this when we come back. I hope you all enjoy this, I hope you all continue to enjoy it, and I will see you all later. Bye bye